You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. In this episode, I'm sharing a chapter from the audiobook of my book, Job Free. And this chapter is about finding your own path to a job-free life. If you enjoy this chapter, I recommend checking out the book Job Free, which you can find on Amazon in paperback, ebook, and audiobook format. And I'll put links to those in the show notes. Without further delay, here's a chapter from my book Job Free. Chapter 5 Choosing a Job Free Lifestyle. There is only one success to be able to spend your life in your own way. Christopher Morley. Nobody learns how to live a job-free life in school or college. We are all taught to be employees. Nobody shows you how to take advantage of all the opportunities for creating a lifestyle where you don't need a job. The focus of the entire education system is employee conditioning. Having a job is the default lifestyle. There is nothing inherently wrong with having a job. Periods of employment can serve an important role in the process of achieving a job-free lifestyle. The problem is that many people would rather live a life free of jobs, but they don't know how to make that dream a reality. You have now heard about four different strategies for living job-free, with real-world examples for each. You've learned about people who achieved financial independence and early retirement. You've heard about others who make a living without a job as unjobbers or entrepreneurs. Which of these lifestyles would work for you? There is no single answer for everyone, as it is a matter of personal choice. In this chapter, I lay out some of the considerations that you can use to decide which of these different job-free lifestyles may be right for you and in what stage of your life they might be relevant. Key questions to consider. Here are some questions to ask yourself to help you choose from different strategies for quitting the rat race and becoming job free. How frugally are you willing to live? Some strategies for achieving a job free life involve extreme saving and living very frugally for many years. Think about the changes to your spending patterns required to save intensively. Would you be happy with that lifestyle? How long are you willing to wait? If you plan to achieve job freedom through extreme saving, you should reckon with spending around 10 years as an employee first during your accumulation phase. Other strategies have the advantage that they enable you to quit your job much sooner, but they have their own downsides as we will discuss. How important is it for you to be your own boss? Many opportunities for living a job-free life come through entrepreneurship. For some people, their primary motivation is to be their own boss. But others just don't want to be entrepreneurs. They don't want the lifestyle or responsibilities of a business owner. What is your level of risk tolerance? Entrepreneurship is a potentially high reward choice, but it is also a high risk one. How tolerant are you to the idea of potential failure? There is more risk involved in taking the entrepreneurial paths. How marketable are your expertise and connections? The more skilled you are and the better connections you have, the more options will be open to you for living job free. Your choices will be limited if you're at a stage in life when you don't have valuable skills or good connections. When to choose extreme saving. Extreme saving is a good path to job freedom if you have a low tolerance for risk. You can use a steady job or a stream of jobs to get you to a point of early retirement and financial independence without risking your own venture. You don't have to be an entrepreneur. If you become an extreme saver, you may need to be comfortable with a lifestyle of frugal living for the rest of your life. There are limits to the amount of money you can accumulate saving as an employee, so this strategy has less of a potential upside when compared to entrepreneurship. 
You will benefit most from extreme saving if you are a highly skilled employee who prefers to work for someone else rather than run a business. If you have highly marketable job skills, you can command a high salary and be relatively secure that you will always find a job. As long as you're willing to save the majority of your earnings, and as long as you don't mind working for someone else for 10 years, this path to job freedom could work well for you. There are also periods in life when extreme saving could be a great strategy, even if you later choose a different path to job freedom. For example, if you don't yet have valuable skills, good connections, or industry knowledge, then you're probably not well placed to start a business. Under these conditions, being an employee and pursuing a strategy of extreme savings could be a useful way to save the money that will give you options in the future. Similarly, if you are in debt, then it makes sense to get a job and pursue extreme saving as a strategy to pay down your debt as quickly as possible. Debt is not a sound basis for starting an entrepreneurial venture. You can use extreme saving as an employee to pay down the debt. Once you are debt free, you can continue using extreme saving to accumulate the capital that will enable you to explore more entrepreneurial lifestyle choices. Extreme saving is the best choice for people who want a low risk plan for living job free. There are many reasons why you might want a low risk option. If you have kids or other dependents, then you may not wish to risk the volatile income associated with starting a business. You may prefer the lower risk, lower reward, more secure option of extreme saving. When to choose unjobbing. Unjobbing has the upside that it allows you to start living a job free lifestyle with minimal delay. If you become a freelancer or live from multiple side hustles, you may be able to quit your job very quickly. I think unjobbing is a good option if you already have highly marketable skills or good connections within an industry. The most successful unjobbers are those who use marketable skills to command good pay without the hassle of holding a job. Andrew, a good friend of mine, worked for many years as a management consultant. That industry has a culture of long hours and high stress working. Andrew loved the work itself, but he became fed up with the high pressure and long hours that went with it. Andrew was able to quit his job and find work as a freelancer because he had an excellent reputation within the industry. He earned more by working one day a week as a freelancer than he had earned working long weeks of overtime as an employee. As an unjobbing freelancer, Andrew would work intensively on a project for a week or so and then take a month off. His job-free lifestyle enabled him to be a stay-at-home dad for much of the first couple of years of his son's life, undertaking the occasional work project to support his family. The unjobbing lifestyle worked well for Andrew because he had good connections, marketable skills, and a reliable source of clients. Another friend of mine named Kyle built an unjobbing lifestyle for himself by becoming a freelance programmer. He was able to do short projects where he earned a lot of money and then take time off to travel. The unjobbing life worked for Kyle because he had highly demanded skills. If you have good connections and significant skills, you may have the opportunity to become a freelancer and earn more than you would as a full-time employee. Unjobbing is riskier than being a full-time employee because you're taking on the responsibility of finding regular income. It is still less risky than starting a business because you usually have low overheads. Unjobbing requires little equipment, perhaps a laptop or something, and therefore little capital cost. If you find after six months that you're not getting enough work as a freelancer, you can find another job. Your losses will be less than if you are pursuing one of the entrepreneurial routes to job freedom. When to choose a lifestyle business. Lifestyle entrepreneurship is for those who want to work for themselves and aim to use entrepreneurship as a vehicle to provide maximum free time. I think this choice works best for people who don't want to sell their business, 
They just want an ongoing source of income to support their freedom-oriented lifestyle. You do need a greater tolerance for risk as a lifestyle business owner than as an extreme saver or unjobber because you may have to invest money in developing your product or service. It may take longer before you start making enough money to support yourself. For these reasons, there is more at stake for you as a business owner than if you remain an employee or become a freelancer. A lifestyle business may suit you if you want to be an entrepreneur and you don't want accountability to others. If you want to be able to do whatever you choose with your business and organize it entirely for your convenience, then a lifestyle business is probably the way to go. If you prefer not to answer to anyone, you may be better oriented to a lifestyle business than a startup. This kind of business is suitable if you don't want to build a team or create a company culture, both of which involve accountability. Because many lifestyle entrepreneurs don't want the hassle of accountability to others, they are often solopreneurs, small businesses centered around one person. Of course, any lifestyle business will only succeed if it provides value to customers and improves their lives. If you don't create something that people want, then your business won't sell anything. However, the main point of a lifestyle business is to give you freedom. Because it is your venture, you will have maximum flexibility to organize it in any way you want. If there is potential for growth, but you don't particularly want to work harder and you're happy with the amount of income that you're earning, then you don't have to grow the business. If you can support yourself only working on the business one day per week and you don't care about earning more, that's fine. It's your business. You can do whatever you want with it. When to choose startup entrepreneurship. Become a startup entrepreneur if you want to build a kick-ass company to pursue a purpose. With this option, your aim is to make an impact on the world through your business. Do you feel excited by the idea of creating an extraordinary organization that can have an impact on the world? Startup entrepreneurs want to create a venture that has a life of its own. Typically, startups are larger ventures than lifestyle businesses. Startups involve building a team and creating a company culture. Create a startup if you are serious about building a company that's bigger than you and can last longer. This path involves the highest risk among job-free lifestyle, but it also offers the potential for the highest rewards. As a startup entrepreneur, you build value in the company that you may be able to sell one day. It may suit you if you're interested in creating something lasting that you can sell and then move on to other projects in life. It can give you financial independence and enable early retirement. You need a high risk tolerance though, because as well as having the highest potential upside, it also has the highest risk, since you're investing more of your money and effort into something that ultimately might not work. If you run a startup, you are far more accountable to others than a lifestyle entrepreneur is. If you take funding, then you will be accountable to investors. If you want to build a successful team, you will have responsibilities towards your employees. You will enjoy the startup lifestyle if you enjoy intense projects. Startups only seem to have one speed, maximum. If you like the idea of immersing yourself in the adventure of building a business, then this is the way to go. If you prefer to limit your involvement, then you may prefer a lifestyle business. If you burn with ambition to build a startup, I suggest it would be easier to launch your venture before you take on other major responsibilities, such as children. The beginning phase of any business is very intense and will be far easier if you're not caring for dependents. Moving between lifestyles. You can move between job-free lifestyles. This choice does not have to be for life. For example, Kyle, the programmer friend I mentioned, made the transition between three of the job-free lifestyle strategies. Kyle started unjobbing as a freelance developer. Eventually, he developed a couple of applications of his own that he sold online. 
His apps became a lifestyle business, which provided him with reasonable income and lots of free time. Then he decided one of his apps could become the basis of a bigger commercial venture. He is now building a startup that aims to serve a huge potential market. Whichever path to job freedom you choose, it doesn't have to be a lifetime commitment. You can change course later. For example, you can be an extreme saver all the way to early retirement, or you can change course along the way and use some of your savings to start a business if you want. If you are unsure about what to do. If you want a job-free life, but you're not sure about which path to pursue, I suggest you consider extreme saving as the default starting point on your journey. Extreme saving requires the least risk and the least imagination. It is the simplest strategy to follow. Saving is also a very good strategy to start with if you're straight out of school or college and you don't have a lot of skills or contacts. As you work a job and save money, you can use your time in employment to gain the skills and contacts that you will need for other ventures. Extreme saving will enable you to build up resources that can give you the leeway to try other job-free adventures. In the end, your freedom is directly proportional to the value you can provide to others. Whichever path you choose, your success in life will be directly related to how valuable your skills and contributions are in your chosen field of work. If you're not sure about which path to take or what you're doing, focus on getting better at your work. Become more customer focused. Understand what people need. Obtain rare and valuable skills. Your financial freedom is nobody else's problem and nobody else's business. Why should anyone else care what you want from your life? Why should anyone else help you achieve your goals? People will help you if you help them first. Therefore, if you want to free yourself, improve your skills towards providing a service that is valuable to other people. Further resources on making the choice. If you would like more information on choosing a job-free lifestyle, here are some further resources that I recommend. Podcast episodes. You can find more discussion of the topics mentioned in this chapter in the following episodes of The Voluntary Life. Episode 106. Self-employed versus business owner. Episode 124. Four ways to quit the rat race. Episode 125, Q&A on four ways to quit the rat race. Episode 218, Choosing a Job-Free Lifestyle. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you like this podcast, please show your support by becoming a patron of The Voluntary Life on Patreon. Your support will help to grow and improve the show, and you'll get access to a treasure trove of rewards, including bonus episodes. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to learn more.